And we'll call the uh, <coughs> special meeting to order. So we're going to call the roll for the meeting. Yes, sir. My last roll call. Mr. Barker. Here. Mr. Farley. Here. Mr. Groom. Here. Dr. Houghton. Here. Ms. Gray. Here. Mr. Rich. Here. Here. Okay. So the special meeting is for resolution 27-20. And that is a resolution city council awarding the RFP for city hall renovations. Uh, it's recommended that we re award to J. Musselman Construction Incorporated for one million two hundred seventy four thousand six hundred seventy six dollars um i have a motion to approve so moved. I have a second second any questions discussion <coughs> mr farley yes mr groom yes dr Houghton? yes Ms. ray yes mr rich yes mr barker yes Yes. So I have a motion to adjourn. The special so meeting. Moved. Second. Second. Done. That was probably the shortest <laughs> meeting. <I recommend. laughs> Ten oh two. Um, <laughs> your input was invaluable. <laughs> so now um, the work session agenda starts. Call it, call it to order. The same folks were in attendance as last time. And who's up first? Uh, Andrew is in the hot seat. I didn't get a list of who we see here. Yeah, just pull around and see right here for right now, I guess. Help him out. No, we're not giving his cousin any business. Why could we have been on police cars? That's the only thing that would have made it better if we're actually on cars. So, no, we're not giving his cousin any business. I don't get any re text messages now. I don't know. Uh oh. Last week. Oh, I don't know. Bad for Winston. When was it last week? You know? It was like, oh, it was Tuesday because you weren't with me. It was after this one. Now, Foxy, I read Dan, you were with Pollock. I was telling you, the public safety. study previous years um, evaluations and a formula that uh, Mr. Pope and Ms. Webber came up with with the mayor and those numbers were plugged in um, with the part-time salaries it's pretty much exactly the same there um, I will say that on the part-time salaries under beach and parking there is um, a few names that are spot holders, so they're actually open. Um, that would be Paul and Mikhail. Um, and as it relates to the potential parking transition, there were two spots that were eliminated um, and a reduction from the spot that Paul's name is currently in. <coughs> help facilitate that um, there was a slight bump up in overtime 
Hold on, hold on, hold on one second. We're going line by line. Yeah. Well, let's 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 back up to that one. So you have Pole, who's a public safety officer, listed under part-time beach and parking officers, drawing a salary out of that line item. What? I'm sorry. Is there a reason? Yeah. So a couple years ago, we used to have LE3s and part-time officers under augmentation um, because they augment staff, you know. Um, but when we separated out all the part-time salaries, and I think that was last, was that last year Lee, that we created the part-time salaries line, like we separated it out, probably, all right, whatever. One or two years ago, um, all those part-time salaries were removed from the augmentation line and put into that part-time salary line. Um, I'm not sure why it's specifically under beach and parking, um, but that's where it was in. Sorry. That doesn't wake you up. Sorry. Um, but there are some LE3s and some part-time police officers that are under that umbrella. Um, like I said, it used to be augmentation, but I think for ease of accounting, they were moved. Well, I mean, and the reason why I'm asking is last year there was one LE3 ordinance officer under that line item. This year there's a public safety officer and two <coughs> LE3 ordinance officers. That's are we using our are we using that line item that that's that money is to pay for officers or using for beach and parking? I guess. So say because to me if they're under that department, if they're under part time beach patrol and parking officers, then Emily Bowles should be doing park tickets on beach patrol. But I don't think she is. Well, no, well that and again that her spot is a spot holder. She's she took a job as a teacher. Um, she's put her name there normally you just say basic. Yeah. Well, she at the time we put this together, she was here. She was a part-time person, Gosh. but I can see where it could be confusing when you say part-time at Under Beach because she wasn't a, a <coughs> she wasn't a beach patrol person. Sure. I wasn't on a part-time job was. Sure. So, does that money come out of that line item in the budget? Like that salary? That salary comes from that that area because that's the way they had it right. into but she wasn't being used as that so if you got a part-time person going forward to, to say LE3 and they're not, they're not being on the beach then I wouldn't put them on the beach and parking that, that, that could cause some sure. confusion sure. Well, uh, this this part-time was put together just as a lump sum part-time dollar amount so this is how much part-time work is going to cost the police department right. and if you do take the there's three le's in there that would leave you seven beach and parking which i think in your recommendation was to go from 12 to 10 part-time so you would need to put three placeholders to get to 10 part-timers on your beach and parking does that yeah, make sense I mean, ultimately <clears throat> even if we stay on the beach i would like buy-in to change some of those beach and parking folks to LA3 status. Okay. Um, as a function of beach patrol. As long as the people under this line item are actually on the sand, because one thing I heard you say was if we stay with beach, I don't think there's any consideration of moving off beach patrol. I mean, that's been one of the better things we've done over the years, and we get, we get requests for more of it, yeah. if anything. Yeah. My next question is going to kind of lead into that. Uh, with the with the beach patrol moving this this transition, you're, you're going to give up two positions, but you'll be able to focus more on the beach. Sure. So when, when we put that money in there, we I, I fully anticipated being spent on the beach. That way, when people come and ask me, Mr. Setford comes in here every other meeting, you know, 13th block, we just you have more enforcement and deter more activity. Uh, is, is it that we can't hire anybody? Should we decrease the jobs and add to the per hour pay to attract more people? Or what is it? Because it seems like we've had some, we've had some vacancies. I know hiring has been tough this year. Yeah. But it, is it one of those things where we take away one of the lot, one of the positions, and bump everybody up? You know, two dollars an hour. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, and I mean, I, I'm not against that as well. It's been tough to find this year specifically. I don't know if it's with COVID or all the unemployment benefits, but this year has been exceptionally difficult to fill those positions. Uh, we're not even getting any applicants, like so. It's not even that we're weeding people out. We're just right. getting applicants. Is that something we can look into, maybe like before the season starts next year? Because I, I don't think, I mean, I don't think you could do that by yourself. But I think we could if we just say, look, we're coming to time. Here's what hiring is like right now. 
Because I'd rather instead of having three vacant positions, I'd rather have one vacant position and pay those more and have a you know, full right. roster that way. So I think the limiter on Beach Patrol is money, not really the positions. I wouldn't do away with positions because I know there's some people that were on Beach Patrol that just didn't want to work more hours. When I was on Beach Patrol, you know, Harry would say, you know, can you work more hours? Do you want to work more hours? And it's like, no, I really just want to work 10 to 15 hours a week. I, I don't want a, a job. I, I just want this part-time thing. <laughs> and, and, well, there's part-time there's part-time workers in everywhere that um, I'm, auto parts delivery guys. You know, those most of those guys are all retired people, and they right. want to work two days a week, and that's all they want to work. They don't want yeah. to work extra. So, so if you want to. I worry that if, if, if you do what DJ was talking about and you limit positions, then you're expecting more from less. And that decreases yeah. your available pool of workers. Yeah, I was just trying to think instead of having three vacancies, if we only if we you know eliminated one of the positions and were paid more, we wouldn't have any vacancies. So I'd rather have two more people on than being without three. That's, that's where I was going with it. I mean, that's what it takes to entice people to work, then or just give it more money. I mean, I'm good with that too. I don't think we would <coughs> ever give that department enough money. I, I mean, within reason. I wouldn't take. I wouldn't take away. That, like the ideal candidate for this position, Beach Patrol, is kind of a retired type person, a part somebody who wants only part time work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so right here. it's not necessarily money driven, is it? As in, just giving the ten or fifteen hours a week. Right, but it's you know, sometimes I just want something to, feel, yeah. to do to contribute to my yeah. community. Well, but if I got if I get paid. Nine dollars to be in the sun for fifteen hours, or I can get paid ten dollars to drive around an air conditioned truck. I'm not going to be out there. So, well, but some people I think want to give back to their community, yeah. and that's how they want to do it. I mean, maybe not. Maybe it should be more than nine dollars an hour. Well, it's, you know, tw it's, it's twelve. It's they, they just raised well, it. I just use those. But well, they raised it two years ago. I mean, from ten to twelve, so that's a twenty percent increase. So I guess you got to consider who's the candidate. Well, the candidate, you need to be able to work weekends and holidays, yeah. which is some of the difficult situations I know that Officer Mims has is with what he has to retire people because they want to spend time with their family and their, which is, but to find somebody who's willing to work weekends and holidays, which is where the need is. And, and, to, and to Andrew's thought earlier about making more of them LE3s so they actually have the ability to write more Ticket. tickets. Yes. Well, so would they they don't have to wait and call somebody else to show up and write a ticket. Right. Andrew, when you reflect on the profile of the applicant, is it local? Is it a Folly Beach person? Usually Folly or James Island, I would say 90%. Mm -hmm. um, but like I mentioned earlier, we're not even getting those applicants. We're not even getting the applicants if somebody wants 10 hours. Mm -hmm. We're not getting any applicant. Right. So, um, so just whatever we can do. Mm -hmm. You know, and I would, obviously there's within their searches, we got a, there's no way to entice or, you know, the way mm -hmm. to entice the people to come out here to want to do that job and spend that time in the sun. And, and once you do that, are they retained? Is the retention good? It's fairly good on Beach and Park. Mm -hmm. Unless they get elected. So they get elected council. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, the ones that we've lost here recently have either been elected or uh, for medical mm -hmm. issues. Um, so, so you would like more potentially recruitment because once you get them, you can retain them. Yeah, most of the time. So I, then, I think for, for beach and parking specifically, a lot of times it's word of mouth. Um, I agree. You know, it's just like- I was gonna say too, where are you broadcasting the job opening? Do we have to do we have to do somewhere legally or can you reach outside do. the box? We do. Um, TAC puts them on the websites. I believe she does. Um, Spencer might be able to touch on this some more. I know they do the city website. I know they do some local mm -hmm. advertising maybe. Um, so I guess I'm tacking you to leave him. We can go through the same thing. You have to rotate it around. So and, indeed, where it last time, and before it was Facebook or yeah. Craigslist or something. But the fewer people you have, the more the expectation is that they're going to have they're going to have to work a certain amount of hours. Mm -hmm. And the more people you have, the less expectation. Mm -hmm. So if you have more people, you say, look, all we want you to do is one day a week. Right. I think there'd be a lot more people that would step right. up and say. I love a job, I do it yeah. once a week. But when I talk to <clears throat> Officer Mims, he's like, well, I've only got 10 spots, so I need everybody to be working two or three days a week. And people go, uh, I But you would run the same funding-wise because you'd have 12 people or 10 people to choose from versus six. 
would, and they would work the same hours. All the states within, I mean, all the, the money. Budget, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. yeah which is, I, I think, think doable. There's 15 lines down here, to be honest with you. I mean, it's, you That's know. my point. Yeah. yeah. If you had 20 people he could choose from, as long as you stay in the money, I don't care if you have 20 in your cadre of workers or 40, but just don't go over, you know, 86,467 or 79,703. And is there, is there a requirement that we pay these people? Are there not perhaps some people that truly want to volunteer their, their time? You can't. We give, you have to pay them something. Yeah. You do? That, is that a requirement? Yeah, we, State yeah, law. You, <laughs> just, just, well, but just to schedule people. It's, an, it's hard. You know, you, yeah. It's spaghetti. <laughs> well, and, it's, and to schedule somebody that's just volunteering, it's like, oh, well, I don't feel like doing it today, so I'm not going. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of a. Typically, that's like treated like automatic. I think yeah, if you had recruitment and just really mm -hmm. just get the word out early to get people to, to uh, register. I wish we could do little chain gangs and put the community service <laughs> people on the beach. You know, they all go pick up trash. Hey, I tried to. I got some community <laughs> service coming up. I told you do. I told um, Andrew to put them in pink jumpsuits and put them out there on the beach. So I was a dummy. Please picking up trash. Why can't we do that anymore? Why can't we? Everybody's mm -hmm. watched a fire truck in their day. Come on. So for the bottom line, do you have enough funds to be able to, what we just discussed, yeah. and you can manage that? Or? Yeah, that's the, yeah. The, the money is typically not the issue. We have not overspent that account yeah. in a number of years. Okay. I think it's just an authorized strength, and I don't know if that's something that falls to the end of the mayor's purview or what. But, but while, we were, while we're on the money situation there, if you add more LE3s, would that... So you got two more LE3s with that. What would that do to your money? No, that, that or if you had three LE3s working. Yeah. I mean, right now, the LE1, the one that was an LE1 with coal spot, that's at a higher rate. As budget has a higher rate. Uh, one LE3, Mr. Abaz is also at a higher rate. And the open LE3 spot there that I have a placeholder in is also budgeted at a higher rate. What, what they, what's the, and I know we've talked about this before, what's the procedure for getting, becoming an LE3? It's a two-week course at the academy. Okay. I mean, anybody can do it. Like, if you, well, you know, I mean, not anybody, but, you know, you say, yeah, I'll be a, a parking, you know, patrol, and then you realize they can do a LE3, they can easily do the two-week. Anybody who's authorized, right? So, you know, you can't have domestic violence um, convictions, you there's certain disqualifiers. Like you have to be authorized background by the state to yeah, pass background requirements. But mm -hmm. other than that, no, there's no okay. specific restriction. overtime yeah I did um, we did plus it up just a little bit um, just about 5,000 we've been pretty good on overtime this past year and into this course Q1 but one of the issues we've run into routinely is storms and then obviously running things like COVID checkpoints is obviously and it was more or less just to try to bring the reality of actuals into what we're spending because typically, if there's one storm, that's usually what gets us over those, those humps, or what pushes us over those. And they are reimbursable to a certain percentage, but that's we found some, there was some money elsewhere that we moved into that, that line item. That's how it happened. So even with the COVID checkpoints, 2020 actuals were $64,000 yes. over time? Yes. And some of that is reimbursable or was reimbursable? Potentially. I would have thought that 64 would have been much higher for as long as we had the checkpoints. We augmented a lot with administrative staff. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 Um, I got a question, I think it's more for Tim, um, to be as gentle as possible. The promotion adjustment and merit for the two top tiers of the salary page. They said, you, so you were involved in that. Was that a, was that a combination of something that was in the conversation study or was that something separate out that to me it just seems like a lot that wasn't for the not for the promotion adjustment for the merit it could have been 
maybe some other guys, you know, were shaken down, or was that part of the other mix? That's all part of their evaluation. With the conversation study, or just yeah, you know. but if, you know, our guys was underneath the conversation study. Well, that's what I'm wondering. You said some people you mix way, up way, ways. way down. Yeah. Okay. But even even with that, it's, it was all the merits are all based on uh, evaluation. Okay. Yeah, to remain on the overtime topic, so the column um, on this second page of the section, overtime hours, is that is that a placeholder for budget purposes that you try to manage to not to exceed? These are not actual. Yes, that's correct. On the personnel sheet? Yes, sir. So somebody might be a two, someone might be a one. That, that's just for budget. What does that mean? Like, you know, one officer, just because of how schedule when overtime availabilities come up, might have more than 150, but then another person, because they're typically the ship that's working, might only have 100. Okay. So, like, those aren't, it's not specifically that each individual person's allocated 150 hours. Right. It's more or less just a... And it's truly deployed as needed. <coughs> it's, not, it's not a way to um, enhance recruitment or retention is to pay overtime. Okay. Okay. We don't have rotating overtime like that. It's literally if you know someone calls out sick and we need coverage, or we're instituting a checkpoint and we need coverage, or a storm happens and it moves to 24 hour operations. It's not, we don't have any, uh, like festivals as an example, is probably the closest thing we have to schedule overtime, um, just because they're known in advance and you're ahead of time, but we don't, we do not schedule overtime like that. Okay. Certification bonuses that would work. Yeah, I think that's the next one. Do you have a rundown? This is what I was asking. Like, who is receiving certification bonuses for what? Like, is this when we started this program? It was meant as a way to, to help retain people and give them more money and get them there. Is it working for that? Are we getting the right numbers? Are we getting the right participation? That's why I was wondering, like, which guys are getting what bonuses? Um, if, if you can, and not not for today, but for Thursday, if you can. That's what I was asking about those. Okay. What do you think about that? I mean, is it, is it working like we thought, like um, we intended? Yeah, I think, I absolutely think so. I mean, we had a huge move, and that's one of the reasons this was plus up a little bit, is we had a ton of people go through fire training. Um, I think we have uh, either four or five going through EMT right now. Um, and those are all certifications that take ongoing continuing education. And, you know, it's a it's definitely an additional responsibility for sure, and this is a way to put a carrot out there and incentivize people to go through and do that. Um, but I also think there's been people having talked to a couple people that have you know, explored different options, maybe moving to a different department that absolutely came into play. Um, as to you know their total compensation package. Right. Um, just for my own education, we had met earlier, and to me to be able frankly, be cross-trained. I mean, that's just such a bonus as far as that goes. And then my only question was, do they, are they retained? I mean, if I was cross-trained, you know, is there an area where I'm then committed, then they grow within the system, and then they stay and they retain them. Didn't we, didn't we get them to sign contracts or something that, went, that they had to be here for so long? Exactly. We didn't want to train them, pay for it, and then they jump ship somewhere else. So I, I mean, I couldn't advocate more as an educator that. It's a great program. All right. um, the housing allowance, uh, there is a request for one additional spot from an officer that lives on the island who's currently on the waiting list. Uh, that's the only change there. Grant uh, to replace our body cameras and our in-car cameras. That's right. Um, I think the total estimated value of the city is probably around 130, 140 thousand. So that's a pretty good, pretty, pretty good get. Um, so that's the change there. The next real change is in capital. Um, I just have a quick question on the um, vehicle repairs. 
That's just renewing. That's not even replacement. That's just renewing. Yes. It's maintenance. That's anything like uh, what we typically end up doing, especially vehicles towards the end of their lifespan, we replace a lot of front ends, okay. uh, top ends of motors. Um, that's it. typical repair. Um, a lot of battery replacements, obviously, brakes, mm -hmm. tires, um, alternators, things like that. That's what I mean. Um, in the capital section, there was a jump in the cost for the vehicles and upfitting. This isn't anything other than the state contract significantly increased. Um, the type of police cars um, that is even available is being reduced quite a bit. Um, Ford, as an example, is now only offering the, the SUV. Um, Dodge Charger is the only remaining police car car and we've had nothing but problems with all the ones we bought so I kind of wanted to move on from that we've had pretty good luck with all the Fords we've bought um, and Chevrolet the only thing they offer now is the Tahoe um, so the large chunk of that is specifically the fact that the base price is been raised are, are any of those vehicles hybrid vehicles no, not currently. So in this request is to purchase the hybrid version of the SUVs. Um, and the reason for that, it's a relatively small investment on the front end. Um, it's $3,000 option on the vehicles. Um, but looking at actuals, uh, from speaking to departments that do use them as well as Ford, is they're saving an average of $3,000 a year on fuel. And we keep our vehicles around six years. So to me, it's a relatively easy, easy return on investment. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, so over the lifespan. Aaron, why don't you just take that and make a copy for everybody? Sorry. Over the lifespan of these vehicles, you should be saving fuel around eighteen thousand um, dollars know, per vehicle. So to me, that seemed like a relatively. Yeah. I'd mention the environmental system. impacts as well. Environmental impacts. Um, so you have to deal with the battery. I, so I talked to Ford about that yeah, specifically with the batteries. I was worried about the battery life. They offer a 10 year yeah. warranty on the batteries. Because um, that was a big concern. Like, you know, how, how expensive is it to replace them? Da, 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 da. There's a 10 year warranty on those batteries. What's the warranty cost? No, it, that's. that's it's, it's included. That's yeah. right. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. So I thought that was that kind of answered those questions. Right. And they would cut that on noise as well, and low speeds. Yeah. So, um, that was the request there. Um, the car itself, so basically if you wanted to delve into that hybrid, that's that's a, a $9,000 upfront cost. Um, is it the Ford SUV that would be the hybrid? Yeah. And that's included in the budget, or is that? Yes, that's okay. included. Cool. Um, but if you don't want to do that route, obviously there, that's 9000 cost. Um, the rest of it is just they went from around 26 on state contract 26,000 a piece to currently about 32 uh, 603 is the current state contract price which is a significant increase that's what everybody buys their cars off of I don't know why I think it's simply simply because South Carolina is a very small market so they don't you know, so the 9,000 is 9,000 total not 9,000 no, per car total. that's total um, I just want to make that clear. Yes. Yeah. Yes, three three per car. Yeah. Thank you. So I just wanted to say Thank that. You. rescue site for a marine unit at the boat landing. Um, I have a layout if anybody wants to see it. Um, we've been working with the county park system um, in order to utilize part of the boat ramp, the corner of the boat ramp. Um, picture kind of a where it would be. Um, 
we're averaging right around 50, sometimes up to 60 water rescues a year, something that's um, we've seen a lot of big increase in, and it's been really successful. Um, I know a lot of you guys are boaters, and obviously during the summertime, the lane can be pretty hairy. Um, this is a way to be more efficient in our response. Um, does, does that include the gates and the lift? And maintenance over time, insurance? Uh, it's or? everything except for ongoing, like, you know, if you were now, the, there are lifts included in that. Right. So the boats would be out of the water. Correct, so yes. You're not going to have, you know, the maintenance as far as scraping the boats. Okay. Um, and let's say you do, there's three options as far as those lifts. And let's say you do dock locks. Dock locks, you don't need to scrape. So there wouldn't really be, yeah. you know, potentially if there's a storm or something, you would right. have to replace some blocks if they left. But um, Turn of the River uses dock locks. I mean, I, I love the idea of, of this. I do have somewhat significant reservations um, about the amount, um, the fact, you know, how we looked at Sunset KK and other areas just to, during at least peak, um, to rent spaces. Um, I have a gut reaction when we build something on someone else's, you know, property, so to speak. So, you know, I, I really am on the fence, and I have to say about this, honestly. Um, How long have we had those water resources now? Uh, three years. Is there a report by year um, for water response, ways in which we utilize those? Yeah. Would that be helpful to see? Um, I'll go ahead and say that just from looking at the police reports every day for the past however many years, there are a lot more marine rescues and times they launch and deploy now. Um, and it's just growing with the popularity of Charleston. The waterways are selling more boats than ever all around town. This just adds to it. Nobody else can get there as fast as us, so we, we need to have a Marisa Life Safety video. It's, it's been wonderful. And I do like the idea. Will this come back later as, as I mean, I guess a bid procedure will accept bids on it. I'm assuming that's how that's going to come. So how comfortable do you feel with 80,000? I know it's, you, you kind of got a scientific guess there, yeah. but where, where do you, are you, are you, you're definitely being safe, or you're with everything, like the gate, the protection. You know, the one thing that I tend to worry about is, is vandalism from the water side. Sure. So this is another, this is another camera that we need to put up if we do this. Yeah. Mr. Stransky in here? No, <laughs> if I got one in his office. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, uh, but, but definitely, I mean, it's an investment we need to make. Well, you're talking about saving, you know, eight, nine minutes each trip. That's, that's pretty significant when you're getting out there. Um, so with that being as all just coming back as a bid later, I mean, I'm, I'm fine leaving it in there because I, I do believe in it. But if, if there's any reservations from other members, at, I mean, you could then you know, put it in reserve at least, a reserve account and they can come back with it, but don't, let's not take it out. Um, I, I do believe that is where we're, we're moving towards. That's going to be looking five, ten years down, down the road. Well, let's keep one thing in mind about water rescues, too. If small craft warnings are up, our boat don't move. And that's straight for me, just protecting our people because somebody else was being not really smart. So, you know, if it's, a, you know, it's just like surfers in a storm. If it's a storm coming and you're going to go surfing, you're out here, you're on your own. You know? So I don't want to give the public a false sense that, oh, yeah, we're going to start doing water rescues no matter when. So, you know, just be, be aware if it's a storm or small craft warnings. It should definitely be a sign on the We ain't going. I, I would, I mean, I would also, when you look at the data, I'd like to see Thank you, a comparison, you know, he, Maybe off season, you know, those sort of things as far as usage. All right, guys, I forgot that important sort button. Now, I got a question for you. To to run water rescues, they do not have to be a licensed captain. 
I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to build in another cost. You know, all of, all of our members of our, the Marine Unit have received training from the Coast Guard as uh, Marine Rescue Boat Operators Protection, and then we also have a number of folks that are swift water rescue and a number of folks that are jet ski rescue, like surf rescue. Mm -hmm. um, and that was another savings a few years ago. We got the Coast Guard to give us that training for free. <coughs> Actually, leads into, into my next one, um, and this is going to go for the fire side too. So remember this one, y'all. You have fifteen hundred dollars for employee water rescue and first responder training. I remember we wanted to move our fire guys and try and get them more EMT. I think there's different levels. I can't remember what they are, but different levels of, of first responder certification so they can start hospital procedures before the ambulance gets there. Because we know the ambulance takes a while, things of that sort. And we're doing a lot more water rescues. We're going to build, you know, this, or we want to build this, this launch site and all that. Why only fifteen hundred dollars for those two trainings? Like in my mind, that's just that's not enough. In my mind, we should, that's because I know that's what we wanted to strive for. Have we have we done that? Yes. Like, is everybody trained in it enough as far as we can go? Or, or I'm just I'm, I just want to make sure that we're giving as much training in those two areas as we can. Yeah. Um, well, like I mentioned, we have built a pretty good relationship with the local Coast Guard. Um, and like last time, it was about a $30,000 total cost training um, that they gave to us for free. That's something that they've reiterated that they're willing to do on a reoccurring basis as needed. The $1,500 is specifically the cost that it takes to get uh, the company that does our surf rescue, like specifically jet ski rescue on the beach. Um, and that's just the cost to get them to come, because they have to come here and you want to put them up right on. But as far as the larger vessels, I planned on leaning on that relationship with the Coast Guard as long as we can maintain that relationship. So that's why it's not specifically budgeted for. What about the first responder training? I guess yes. that, that's what you're talking about, okay. Well, no, the first responder training, as far as the EMT, that's something we are doing and we do do. We've got all of our members are EMR certified. Uh, and we're getting like this year, and, and I can say four or five that we have an EMT right now. Okay, so uh, there's four people that are currently in EMT training. <coughs> um, so, and our recent hire was also EMT certified coming in the door. So, those are all things that we definitely continue to do. I, I <coughs> do share some concerns about the well, about the eighty thousand. If, if, if looks like eighteen thousand six sixty plus delivery and install. So, say. We've got twenty-two thousand just in just in the lift. That that leaves what, 40, 48, is that right? Uh, Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight or forty-eight. Forty-eight thousand to do the the pier and the pier head. And I, I know how much the city pier is costing us, not driving any pylons and just doing walkway, railways and pier head is two hundred and twenty-eight. I just, I'd be amazed if you could bring all that in under 20. I'm glad to hear, because <clears throat> when I saw the 80, I was really concerned about it. And in conversations, I realized it was for a permanent structure, which I'm better off at. I, I think about, it, does OCRM have to get involved and we have to get this approved? And yeah, it'll be permitting through, through them. Um, and that was part of what we, the initial negotiation with the county was that we would handle all the permitting. Seems. Um, the cost was estimates estimates based on talking to Eric about what it costs to sink pylons, how many pylons we need. And then if you've noticed in the corner of the boat landing, there's those large concrete um, structures that are kind of in the back corner, back in the southwest corner. Um, those are being saved there for a purpose, potentially to reuse them. Um, that's the walkway. Um, and there's three more over by the county park in the marsh. Um, Trying to be thrifty, um, so that was the thing. Now let's don't get too thrifty. With all these, because <laughs> because I'm I'm just getting ready to if we because we didn't talk about this it just come to me. Um, we still got to push on to um, regulate boats, parking, yes. docking. 
So this facility will be used for more than just rescue when we get when because we're going to get it done. We're going to get it done, uh, but when we get it done, so we'll have to go out and monitor. Somebody's going to have to go out and monitor the area code enforcement for docking permits and to keep them from just rafting up because they want to just live there. So this 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 piece of building will become our pier will become a pr double purpose use one for the code enforcement and one and, and rescue which kind of be hand in hand same group doing it but still it'll be more than just a rescue purpose to mr. to mr rich's point maybe we should put this in a reserve account because with all these other government agencies involved it might not be for three years before we need to actually tap into that eighty thousand. I mean, we're, we're still waiting on the kayak launch to be approved down there. And that, I know we've talked about that, but that involves DOT, does it not? Yes. Yeah. That, was that, like that explains why. Two, two more government agencies. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's getting ready to go. That's getting ready to go to work at boat landing. The it's other really, one. The other one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, I don't know if we'll ever see the other. Well, it'll be that'll not. be great to see that actually. But, so but, yeah, absolutely. So just for my level of understanding, what we could do is pass the budget put something in reserve and revisit it again. Yeah. Okay. Can you keep it as, the, as this specific line item in the reserve so that it doesn't get reserve anything. Yeah, absorbed? A designated reserve. Coming here. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is for this. Right. Yeah, so 100% designated sort of marine mm -hmm. Well now, now understand reserves are reserves and right. they can be moved by a different council somewhere else. But you know, yeah, you can put it in for um, marine launch site or marine or however you want to however you want to however Lee wants to title it uh, and the money will be sitting there and they just kind of like police cars you put the money in the reserve for police cars and then as he buys them he comes back and says okay I'm gonna buy it. you know I'm getting two next month and then there you go I mean Chief Bill, do you have any I mean this may be a question you're like I wish I had the answer to but any sort of time um, no, I really don't. The permitting is something that's kind of a, a wild card. Um, I will say that I, I feel like, I'm sure Aaron and Spencer would probably agree, that I feel like we have an awesome relationship with, with DHIC. Um, and honestly, we're working with them right now on another grant to help kind of corral some of the remaining vessels. And, and we do have a really good working relationship. Um, but to say that it's uh, no. By next summer is yeah. very so, so to ease one point that was brought up that I haven't thought about before about, you know, we, we work so much with the county, it's like, I don't think about building it on somebody else's property. Have you looked into just putting a pier head off of our dock that we're rebuilding now? Mm -hmm. I would love that. I would love mm -hmm. to do that. We did look into it with the, uh, we have that grant, right? Mm -hmm. And they said something to the effect of that it would reduce the available use for what we have the grant for. Uh, because that, that dock was paid for with LWCF funds, Part of that is a very specific use description of how that dock is used for recreational okay. use, fishing, et cetera. So when we first started this, our first thought was, hey, let's put it on the dock. So we wrote, we wrote to the grant folks, and they, and they wrote back and said, if, if you added this, it would alter the use that you got the money for the grant for. And so, no, you can't do that. So they figured you couldn't fish if you put this piece on there. Okay. <laughs> Which is, yeah. All right, I understand. I know about grants and Creates more structure public fish places. Office. Yeah. Anyway, okay. um, yeah. as far as the timeline, I'd say even well, even with our existing relationships, uh, the will of the government do tend to move slowly. So I would anticipate at least a year design, permitting, approval, construction. So at, at a minimum, from the, from the time you say go, a year would be an optimistic uh, end date. Yeah, that goes back to Mr. Farley's comment about the kayak launches. We've had people retire from that job. <laughs> so we have new people come in. We're going to have to say as a political concept, we have reservations and we're going to have to have a reservation. Like I said, county dynamics. Not I think a reserve count would be appropriate for that money. 
I had thought, originally I thought the better expense would be to buy a truck and just to go down and stage the boat there. But um, I think at this cost, this probably is a, a, a long run solution because while you can stage out there for water rescues on weekends and whatnot, if, if we ever do get the authority to police out there by the bridge and boats that are moored, uh, we probably do need where one person can go down there and you know launch a tool around or two people without having to. This is this is probably the better solution for the long term. And, and just so y'all know, aside from the mooring, which is a slightly different aspect, we, once we completed the training with the Coast Guard, uh, DNR did give us law enforcement law enforcement authorization for all the water surrounding our jurisdiction. So we do have law enforcement jurisdiction on the water as DNR. That's basically a, a step in for DNR. Does that, that include beachfront as well? Except for more. Uh, beachfront as well? Yes. For fishing? Yes. Okay. What, um, how, I know we just talked about this about a month ago, but is there any, any movement on that from the other levels about the mooring? Yeah, that's what we just said. We're going to get it done. We, oh, I know. We, now, we get, now we just have to uh, get an ordinance written and passed, and we we got to, we got to sit down and figure out you know, exactly what it's going to take to, to, to enforce our ordinance and where we go from there. And if we do put it in reserve, but you still need to function, I still worry about, you know, response time, you know, all those things that we would benefit. Is there a way in this process that we can, until we get to the end, that we can, like I said, I'm just trying to be creative, that during the peak we rent spaces. I mean, I just, I do worry about, you know, response time and looking at creative ways to maybe in the summer rent a slip or something is that still doable in the budget slip. Yeah. I mean if, if there are other ways such as there are other marinas there are other things to look at so that there it is let's say if it's in the summer it's sitting there bing bang boom get on it during this time when you know, we're trying to get to a permanent solution. That's that's what I'm thinking. I think you run into problems, say, Sunset K with other people being on the docks if all of a sudden we come through like gangbusters running down there. Uh, I can see that might be an issue because there's so many private docks having an emergency boat might be an issue. Do you, do you, I mean, again, I want to give you as many options. One of the things we've done on a, on a short term <coughs> temporary thing mm -hmm. is like a 4th of July week, like weekend like that. Right. We have either borrowed or, or you know slips from folks around town or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, typically, it's been at Mariners K. Um, so yeah, I'm familiar with that. Um, so for that, that for that purpose. So so if 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 you think about that, and you think about long term folks sitting at somebody's place, then you need to go back and buy that lift to get it out of the water because no matter whose dock is sitting at, you still have the same problem. Mm -hmm. And it's a terrible problem in the Folly River because the water runs so much that, you know, after three days, barnacles will build up on the bottom of it. And it, it is, it's and, tough. And to Mr. Rich's point, there, there is some concern for like more long-term storage over security mm -hmm. at, a, at, more, at a more like public, but a public marina where there's people, there is some concern there for security. But yeah, when it's like a two, three day weekend, that's typically no, I, yeah, no, I, I just see and I just feel like if it's going to take some time and we could win and get something, you know, save more lives if you needed that access, um, I'd be definitely supportive. Um, the intro. Speaking of reserves, I, I just kind of noticed there's a $15,000 reserve place in there for police vehicles and equipment. I actually think that was meant for fire. Um, so anyway, and there's another reserve in here for um, National Night Out for 4,000. Um, I don't think that's happening this year, just based on the COVID. Are there other, though, I mean, because that was a great community social service, are there other ways that you'd rather reallocate that? Um, 
me a little kid. Yeah, let me think. Let me think. I, I mean, I know it's a reserve, so it doesn't have I to would, be used this year. I wouldn't take it out completely because, yeah. you know, uh, like we're not having a Halloween carnival. As people know, Halloween carnivals. But we are going to do things for the kids. So uh, National Night Out might not be National Night Out as mm -hmm. we knew it in the past, but there is still some education that can be done for the right. public and the kids. And, you know, something that can maybe. I love when y'all answer my questions about me asking. Well, <laughs> Halloween <laughs> carnival? Well, different stuff that y'all just said. Y'all answered like three of my other questions. It's great. Uh, yes, I mean, that, that was one of my thoughts. Your outreach that you do, the story time, the, I mean, all those other community service um, exposure that you have. You know, if, if we keep it called that. I was more or less bringing it up from a perspective. I didn't want y'all yeah. to think like I'm asking for it if you don't do it. And then. Kind of like a festival that's not going to happen. Yeah. But, but, yeah, just think of National Night Out as not just that one off thing. For the next year, mm -hmm. is just community promotion, and you use it as a community promotion great. fund for so, for fire department and the police department. It's also in a reserve, so if yeah. they don't spend it, they won't use it the next year. Make a bigger one, you know, more power to you. The sixty nine hundred comes out and goes to fire. The fifteen thousand. Yes, that was meant to be for fire um, to go towards the fire truck reserve. Okay. So, man, you could have left it there. We could have went and bought two four-wheel drive vehicles for tractor supply. Yes. I'm, I'm just kidding. For the beach yeah. run. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I just know that was the discussion. Um, moving on to the fire. Salary changes again were reflective of that raise formula that I mentioned earlier. Um, the largest changes in the fire side are in the parking <coughs> salary area. Um, what the request, the request or two of them, one of them is an amount of approximately 11500 and that is to have a longevity program for the part-time folks and then tax on I believe it was a quarter for each five years quarter an hour for each five years of service is that listed or something yes It's at the bottom of part time. So basically, for every five years of service that a part time employee on the fire department spend at the city of Pauly Beach, we tack on 25 cents per hour. And based on our current service time, that's the, the estimated cost. Um, the second ask is to remain competitive with other local agencies that also hire part-time folks and that is to change the part-time firefighter uh, if they're a driver their hourly rate to 14 an hour and if they are a firefighter EMT to $15 per hour um, the total estimated cost based on hours worked would be $31,000 us becoming a BLS agency is imperative that we have at least one EMT available on every single ship 24 7 um, and this is a way to help recruit and retain those folks that are do have those additional certifications um, uh, in our part-time ranks because as you know our, our fire department is staffed as a mix between and part-time folks. What happened to us trying to get more full-time firefighters. A couple years ago, we said we wanted, we wanted to get away from part-time as best we can get full-time so we, they can come here for storms and things of that sort. But we were trending in the wrong direction. We we're going up a lot in part-time salaries, but full-time's not. What, what's, what's, the, what's the hold up? What are you, what's, what's happening? Um, I still think that's a smart direction to go. Um, long 
term. I think one of the biggest concerns is just the cost of the retirement and healthcare that becomes the, the, the trade-off isn't as equitable. You know, like historically, you could get to a point where it was a relatively easy wash. And I think with the rising cost of healthcare uh, and retirement specifically, it's getting to be a, not such an easy wash. Um, now, granted, I also agree that you know the issue is still the issue, is which when we have major storms and things like that, those people are going back to their other agency. Um, but the flip side of that is we're getting a lot more of our police officers, firefighter trained, and a lot more of our staff in general, medical and. Um, you know, I hear you. That that's awesome, but. Previous council said a couple of years ago, if I remember right, that we wanted to move towards more full time to have them to come back. So we're going with what y'all project. So is, is it we can't find people to fill these jobs? We don't have any open slots. I mean, I see two of them. We uh, well, when this was created, that where it says fire PSO, the top of the bottom of full time says TBD. Uh, that that spot was filled. Um, firefighter Irwin, that's his name, Firefighter EMT. I guess, are we are we happy with the full time that we're at, or should we try and increase more? Because the main priority before was for storms and emergencies, we always got the short end of the stick because these guys went back to their home base and not here. So we always had to supplement with other, other officers or, or things of that sort. Are we happy with the amount of full time guys that come here for something like that, or do we still need to keep going for more? Because if we need to keep going for more, we're not going in the right direction. I guess this is what I'm getting at. I mean, I, I understand that argument. The, the flip side of that is we're not adding additional part-time staff. We're just remaining competitive with the staff that we currently have. You know, so, I mean, yeah. you want to you weigh in? Well, I was, and I would say from where we were from those discussions with full-time people to where we are today, we've made strides to have more full-time people. So if we have a storm, we have more people here than we had in past years because where we only had one person full-time per shift, now you got three people full-time per shift kind of thing. Excuse me, two people full-time per shift. <laughs> so so we doubled that number, but you know, to get everybody full-time was, hey, I love it. Just stick the money in there and we'll go hire some people. I think the discussion evolved around the cost of doing that, going to full-time. No, I'm pretty sure that we were on board with going full time and bringing back for emergencies. Fire something that I don't think, you know, I've never been a part of a council that wants to cut fire. Well, kind of need it. It's just, we just need to put more money in there to, I mean, to the pay them. That's all. bring three more full time people, one per shift. Yeah. A year or so ago. The projection was $270,000. Bring on three full time more people. $270,000. Now we're going to be all this. And you, I'm sorry. When you say that that salary, that's benefits, that's recruiting. I mean, that's yeah. you know recruiting them in. That's the old. I understand. That's just to bring one more full-time person per shift. So three of them for three shifts is two hundred seventy thousand dollars. Why do you have to do it three times, sir? Why do you have to do it three at a time? Why can't you bring in one more full time fire person? See what I'm saying? Well, what you have to they gonna work? Or what hours are they going to work? I mean, I mean that's your point. The, the 2448. 2448. So what you're saying is it has to be three full time firefighters or right. zero? To increase the three full time well, firefighters per shift. I think, no, but I think what. That's not what I'm saying. I think what, hang on, I think what Mr. Rich is saying is okay, you got. A, B, C shift, it's all about three people. So if you bring one more on this year for A shift, you still have two part-time people for B and C shifts. Uh, that's what he's thinking. So at the long range. But then that's still one more person that we get to call back instead of going somewhere else. That, that's, that's the name of the game. So that would be $270,000 divided by about three would be whatever it is per person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll we'll it. You were waiting. You that one waiting, <laughs> waiting. Uh, and, and if that is the long range plan, you know, if ultimately you want to get to the three, there's definitely ways to 
put it in a plan. And, I, and I can't add three and three today for some reason. Two hundred seventy thousand dollars divided by three is really easy if you think about it. It's ninety thousand dollars. <laughs> three to twenty seven. Don't, 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 don't diminish my accomplishments. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> hey, and I just realized that with a calculator. You know, it's like big <laughs> And I was educated by Charleston <laughs> County. <laughs> it looks like if you use if you use what our current current <coughs> person makes all the way across to include maximum health benefits, which obviously would be reduced if they're single, it looks like seventy three thousand per. Yeah, but you gotta figure family benefits. Well that's with family Yeah, that's what's no so it would you, I thought you said single, single if they well, were single. Seventy three thousand with family benefits. Oh with family benefits, okay. And if they're single it's half. Uh, so I got a question for you. If, if we hired, if we went, if we found another EMT that was crazy enough to want to be a firefighter, mm -hmm. uh, like our old buddy Holberg, if, if if we hired that guy today, how much would he make per hour because he is an EMT qualified? How much is Erwin? Uh, Fourteen forty-three. Fourteen forty-three. So to recruit somebody. Would fourteen forty three recruit somebody, or you got to go to fifteen dollars an hour? I mean, for well, EMT. Well, it is EMT certification. He gets the stipend program. Well, there. that's that's what I meant. With, yeah, he gets fourteen forty three as a firefighter plus whatever that. I gotta go back and look it up back here. We'd make it much higher than the seventy three that the chief started talking about. No. Seventy three plus two grand. So well, yes, yeah, because EMT is fifteen hundred bucks, unless he's a paramedic, twenty five hundred dollars. So um, we we're also we can we can save some from the part time too, because if we're getting the other full time, you say you cut out, mm -hmm. yeah, you are going to save right there. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm part timers. Yeah, I'm not arguing about. I'm just I'm trying to figure out if we if we go to recruit another full time person, we need to recruit. Excuse me, somebody that's EMT qualified, hopefully. Where you, where you typically, sorry, where you typically save the money is specifically health over time. Those are the two yeah. areas you don't spend because they typically don't get it. But I can't go out and advertise just for a single person. Well, but no, I would know. I, I'm just saying, like, those are the two areas where the trade-off. Like, if you yeah. say I want to eliminate, you know, two thousand nine hundred hours of part-time money to pay for this, on that's a wash. Yeah. What's not a wash is that you got to budget that you know thirteen thousand nine sixty one for full family, mm -hmm. and then a property yeah. five thousand in overtime. And uh, just to point out, also the part time staff that we have, part time firefighters we have, there's at least two part timers per shift that are EMT qualified to come work that part time shift on the full time shift also. Well, that's that was my thought. And if you're actually going to try to recruit another full time person, we actually need to. Try to recruit a full-time person that, that is an EMT. And I just not I, not just not just a. I'm not. I, and I'm going to use names. We're not going to go hire Mickey, who's a firefighter and, and qualified to be a firefighter from A to Z. But he's not an EMT. I'd rather hire Hober, who's an EMT and a firefighter. You know what I'm saying? So yes, if we're going to recruit another full-time person, I'm saying that we need to think about trying to make it where we can recruit somebody that's EMT qualified, if we can find somebody like that. And right now, on the full-time staff, we have at least one full-time EMT per day yeah. on staff. Uh, the present four that are going through the EMT class include myself, Captain Turner, Captain Mumford, and PSO mm -hmm. Lauren Moore. Mm -hmm. I only heard one of them is going to make it. Well, probably <coughs> so. Probably so. <laughs> Probably so. Uh, it, it, it's very intriguing. I was certified up until 2009. Yeah. But at age 64, going back into the new EMT course and stuff like that, it, 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 it's going to be challenging. That's the first two weeks of class is already proven. So it's them are the four we're going to have. Yeah, well, I mean, that's good. But, and, you know, just, just to. My point is, though, is that. The part timers that we do have and the part time slots we got, we got at least two of them that are firefighter certified, driver certified, and they're EMT. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. I got that. But I'm just saying if, if the council wants to go hire another full time person, we need to look at somebody that's a, 
this EMT qualified as a full-time person. That, that was my only point. I don't, I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose, uh, well, our, what shift does Q work on? Patty or whoever, whoever's a EMT plus a driver, blah, blah, blah. I hate to lose them as a part-time person, so if we hire, say, they, th those guys only work on A shift because of the way their full-time work falls out, you know, you, you stand a chance of losing some of that qualification that we get uh, what if, as a part-time advantage. Do we have a part-timer that we can make a full-timer? Uh, I mean, that's the first place I would look. The biggest, the biggest issue that I ever yep. hear, and, and obviously, you know, the chief Burke can weigh in, is that since our fire department folks are only SCRS, we are not competitive compared to the other agencies that have their fire department on force. And that's what? been, whenever I've talked to part-time people about coming on full-time, that is always what comes up. What is SCRS? So the state retirement system is broken into two sections. They have the uh, like civilian version, which mm -hmm. is what SCRS is. It's mm -hmm. got, there's some reduced benefits and it becomes more of a, like a calculation of retirement. And the FORS retirement is the sworn retirement and it's a specific time period. There's better benefits. Right. And if the other fire departments offer FORS and the same money, it would make no sense I understand. to come somewhere so, to get the same money with less benefits. So, so here's the deal. If, if, if the city of Charleston is in the FORS retirement system, mm -hmm. Then all you have to work is 25 years and you get full retirement. If they come out and here's a here's a kick, if they come out here and work part time, that adds to how many years they're working. The time is counted toward their retirement. Time. So somebody can somebody can work full time and then come out here and work part time and they they create oh I can retire three years earlier if I keep working part time here for you know. Interesting. That's, that's what he's saying about trying to get somebody from another ship or another company over here. What's the, what's the cost difference between the two? I don't know that we've ever... God, can we even, I don't even know that we can even shift now, can you? You, you can do it. It's a vote of counsel. Um, I don't know if we've ever even discussed this, but if it's not, if it's nominal and it helps retain um, good no. people... So it's a little bit less than... Three percent, like two point eight percent. So the retirement for SERS, the city's percentage is fifteen point five six percent, and for poor's, which is what we currently pay our police officers, it's eighteen point two four. Do you have to go back and pay arrears? Like if they've been five years in, you don't no, catch them up. You don't, and the reason why is because of what the mayor said. It's but you'll get time. So like your SCRS time just, counts just time percentage for counts. Now you don't. There's obviously a, a formula as far as what those benefits will attribute to at the end. It's not one but for it's not one. But it's not one for one. It's not lost time. Mm -hmm. It's just you might have 15 years at your poor's rate and 10 years at your state rate. So you don't have to make it whole by going back and making your uh, SCRS. Not unless you want to spend some more money <laughs> as a council. Well, I remember yeah. I had looked at a job in South Carolina while I was captain, but to keep on track, I would have had to come up with eighty thousand dollars cash to put right. into pours and that's what I to stay I on track. Here. Yeah, I came down here and it cost me about ninety thousand to keep my money, keep me at the same track. Yeah, but, so, yeah. So, I might be off on this, so it would make us potentially more competitive if we looked at the other option. You know the pores. Is that an option for us it's to an do? Option to evaluate. So it, to me, it's a it's, it's something to evaluate, but it, it, it's a double edged sword. And the mayor did touch on this, right? So, and our part timers, right? So just for like recruiting part timers, it is beneficial for us to be in state because then guys can double their time, and that's just something that's beneficial, right? It's our full timers that are kind of screwed. My argument to TAC has always been the public safety officers. Whether you're assigned to the fire department or the police department, you're a public safety officer. It's not the same as every other department. So I don't understand, and I will never understand, 
why our full-time staff who are public safety officers, regardless of being assigned to fire or police, they should all be enforced. Because the only people that are getting penalized by what we're currently doing is our full-time people. That's the only person that's penalized. It is super beneficial for a part-time person for us to be on state because they're doubling their retirement. It's so our full-time fire people. The full-time fire, fire people. people. Mm -hmm. Fire people. Just the fire people. Because the yeah. police officers are already for us. I mean, they have to be. But it's it's just those full-time people, however many, whatever it is, five, six people, six people. It's those six people that are the ones that are. Huh? Police officers are in pores, yes. but the full so we're in different we're in different ones now. Yes. So is there a way to just add a full time firefighters to it? So that's, what, that's, that's what she that's that's what she is. Okay. All right. That's she said. Yeah. So like and just to give you the background, what she's saying. So in years past, you know, everybody who's on that fire department gets the same vote, whether you're full time or part time. Well, of course the part timers are going to vote to stay and stay. There's no reason for them not to. And the part timers outnumbered. And the part timers just by numbers outnumbered the first full timers. So the full timers again are the only ones <laughs> that are getting a reduced Don't benefit. Jason's tail, man. You know, and, that, and that's unfortunate. My whole thing is, I think the issue is, and it's nothing against anybody. I think the issue is they should not be qualified as firefighters. It's as a public safety officer, a public safety officer, a public safety officer, right? So whether you're assigned to police, fire, or indifferent, that's what you are. And I think we, as a city, should say our public safety officers are forced. Our part-time fire can stay SCRS still matter. I just don't understand that. The, the, can can we do that? that can we, and that's apparently what yeah. she's looking up. I just don't. So we can make the full-timers fours and the part. That's what I didn't ask. So I'm just getting it. So TAC is looking at. We can make the full-timers fours and the part-timers stay. And that's I, I think it's I think it should be as simple as as putting them in as public safety officers just like our police officers because it's irrelevant for a full time fire for our full just our full time guys yeah a, a, a true public safety department true public safety rotates department, around and which around is, which is mm -hmm. exactly what we're looking at and so it makes sense to me I just think those those few people I mean and I don't blame part time if I was a part timer I'd want to be state too because it doubles your time it's yeah because I, I actually right? know some of our guys that retired early it used to work part-time for us that, that and that's why they well, did it and if we did that and let the part-time people stay with it that's actually a benefit to them 100 and it's, so it's cheaper for us so it's, it's really that's fine everybody wins yeah it's just those few full-time fire guys that are the ones that are kind of getting, in my opinion and again talking to some of those guys over time mm -hmm. is, that's definitely something that weighs or like for instance, we had one guy not too long ago we were talking about coming from full time to part time, and that was his number one concern. Yep, that was the deal breaker. Because yep. I can come over here and make the same money, but in my retirement stinks. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Anyway, it's just that's just five dollars. It's just, just money. <laughs> but I mean, it's just it's a discussion that should be had, and I, yeah. mean, I think it's important because mm -hmm. I mean, you just have to give a very small group of staff that's not getting. Yeah. It's strange how that worked because I can think of one guy that was a captain for the city of Charleston. He worked for us part time as a firefighter, just a regular firefighter, and it got him to retire like three year, three and a half years early. Some of those guys, if you work at a captain's rate in pours. Like Q, Q's one. Q's like almost yeah. cut his time in half because yeah. he's worked out here long enough. I guess it's, it's awesome benefit for those guys. Mm -hmm. anyway. Okay. All right. Are all the positions currently filled? Do we have we have three per shift? Yes. So we have nine. We're never short or anything like that. Are we? Um, full -time, our full time staff is is full as of Mr. Urban. No, like for first shifts, where we have coverage all the time, right? Two full timers per shift. Yeah, we're we're staffed full time. Two full timers per shift, and then in the summertime, I believe it's seven months out of the year. There's two part time. But those four, those so there's four during like the heavy season. Right. Um, we have, we have all of us just like we're not of what we have budgeted. We're not missing anybody. Just filled the last spot. 
Don't tell me where we are. I've been looking. All right, we're on fire ops, operating supplies. Okay. Um, the only change in this one was the number of gear to be purchased. It's uh, we usually were buying three sets of gear. That was plus to six. Um, and the, the reason for that is it expires. There's a shelf life. Um, and we just got a lot of gear that needs to be replaced. Um, what is is turnout gear like the pants and the jackets and stuff? Sir. What is their shelf life? Ten years. Ten. And how many how, how many suits do we have? Um, some of our part-time staff share suits, which isn't ideal, but that's what we do. Um, but all of our full-time staff that's fire certified uh, has a set, has their own personal set. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that, but um, I don't know the total number. We might, we have it obviously, but we don't have a good. Do you know off of your head too? I can get that for you. Um, so the six sets, that's only replacing sets. That's not giving any of those part-timers or mm -hmm. That's just replacing sets that are coming up. And then the unfortunate part about the way it works is it's 10 years whether it's been worn or not. So it might, it might have best. seen a fire. It, it's just one of those things where it would absolutely work in a fire. It's just like a ballistic vest. It would absolutely, I've shot 20-year-old vests. I know you have works perfectly fine. But the minute it doesn't, and they come in and see that it's expired, you're, you're off. You're What's the shelf life on a vest? Five. Five. Yeah, Point blank yeah. was ten, I think. But uh, there was we we replace ours every five years. That's the shelf life. Um, we had a grant though that replaced. We do the vest. We use the state. We use the actual federal grant for that. Yeah. There's no such fire turnout gear grant. So we do just like um, Public Works does. Um, our is it Smir uh, Schmidt or one of those two Smurf or Schmidt? One of the two has an annual grant, but it's only like three grand. So we do we do it. So we do three grand for that one. We do three grand from the state for a ballistic vest. Uh, Public Works does it for their safety gear. And then we do the federal law enforcement grant for the vest, um, which isn't doesn't save us all the money, but it, it's a good chunk. Yeah, it's not, on a fire, I'd say it's a smaller percentage of the cost than the ballistic like Public Works. But we can't count on that money until we get it, so we don't budget like no. Three thousand will come from them, so all we need is three. It's just later we don't spend the six. We roll six, uh, roll three. Yeah. And you ain't never lived until your turnout gear fails, and you're in the middle of a fire. It's just one of those things. It's so unfortunate because you know that it could look brand like turnout gear as an example. It could look brand new, and it would work perfectly fine. But the one time it doesn't, and they come in because they will. Someone's hurt. And they're going to inspect that. OSHA. That's the first one. You, you are done. So, right. and so. Mr. Charlie, we do budget ten thousand in state grants, and that's usually that's not a specific grant there on your revenue page. Mm -hmm. It's usually some combination of the grants you just referenced. But we're not able to save on the expense side. We still have to budget. To every department has chagrin. We make some show it as revenue and expenditures. Right. I guess the auditors make us do that. But right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's expiration, I understand that, but they're also shared. How many people share? Can you just give me a little sense of the sharing? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a very tough pill to swallow mm -hmm. to buy everybody their own year, because mm -hmm. as you know, with part-time staff, right. one month they might work two days, right. one, day, one month they might work five days. And typically how we try to do it is folks that do work more mm -hmm. tend to have their own stuff, okay. but it's just, it's a hard pill as well to say, I'm gonna spend $3,500 on you to come out with once a month. Like, it's just a tough. It's, it's not ideal, but it's kind of a. So it's the amount of time. Yeah. Work. It's just, it's a tough pill. That's how you just. Now, granted, they're not sharing things like per, like gloves, you right, know what I mean, right. or whatever, but I mean, the, the jacket pants. It's the amount of work. Okay. Thank yeah. you. It's just, it's trying to balance. Yeah. The needs. You know, yeah. Um, We're going with operating supplies. I got one question that kind of got lost in the shuffle. Sure. Um, so, and y'all, Bill and Jim, you might remember this. A couple years ago, last year, we gave Raymond Lloyd and Wagner, we gave them additional responsibilities. So we have, he was our fire operations chief now, but he's a part-timer. Is that normal? 
And would he be one that would switch over to full time if, if, if to me, you're the boss of your yep. company as a part timer? That's just is that is that normal or? Well, he's just a contractor working for the boss of the company. The boss of the company. That's what Wagon Runner is. That's what I'm Lloyd. Lloyd's the part time. Well, guy. he he both of them part time. Wagon is like a ten thousand dollar contract. He he can't because he can't make any more money. Right. With the state, he he's he's a he's 20. in that state retirement thing where. Twenty. I thought it was 10. Was it 20? Anyway, he's in that retirement thing with the state where if you're working for another state agency, you That's can't make but X number of dollars. Gotcha. Um, is it Lloyd, Lloyd is actually a part-timer. I mean, if you if you wanted to create an assistant chief or battalion chief's level to take the job that Lloyd's doing plus some, but actually Lloyd is just working part-time working for the fire chief who's the deputy director of public safety but and, um, according to the organization I'm sure he's over everybody else in the fire department well as a part-timer as 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 an operations ongoing thing but you know ultimately if you want to make more full-time positions I'd put him on the floor I wouldn't put him in, a, in an administrative part he's just he's just the administrative part of that. I'm process. sorry. I'm, oh, I'm not advertising for more. No, 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 no. I, no, I'm just, sure. I'm just There's saying that. There's Indians in this thing I've ever seen. But the part-time guy is above the full-time. Is there something, to me, is there something wrong with that? You know, we just, you have somebody that doesn't work as much telling all these guys are there all the time, you know, what doing all that, and that's just the way it's listed. I just, I, I don't know. You know more about that kind of side than yeah. you guys. Well, I have no idea. It, it, like I said, he's just doing more administrative work than, than actual hands on on the fire. Now he does answer fire calls if he's here. And he is qualified to do that. And he's qualified as a uh, he's also well, certified EMT. He's taught us the EMR course. Yeah. But but no, 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 I'm, no I'm just saying uh, he's also mm -hmm. a certified uh, fire marshal. You know, so in that kind of stuff. But Hey, you know, I, I'll uh, so I'll make just, I'll, another off just, just give me some money and I'll make a battalion chief slot there, <laughs> oh, <laughs> we got and we'll go out and get one. <laughs> that won't be a problem. But should, I mean, shouldn't this? Why should this be above? Shouldn't be over on the same side of this wagon burner just off to the side, and they all report? Well, we we could draw it that way. I mean, there's I mean, because I'm that, that's just on the paper. There's there's a lot of redundancy with with descriptions. I think this is something that kind of confuses. I mean, I, uh, just from, again, totally new eyes, I just made an assumption that his qualifications, whatever it was, his resume, I don't know, rendered that amount of hourly rate as opposed to another part time. I don't think he's talking about hourly rate. I think he's talking about, mm -hmm. I thought the organizational chart. Talking about, he's talking about a full timer report. There's a part timer up here on top over all these full timers. Yeah, you're on time. So that's yeah, why I said we can move off to the side and not above those guys. That's the that, that, same that they all report to him, and then he reports to Rocky, who reports to Andrew. I understand. Would you see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. No problem. Would we be better to pay him as a contract instead of a part-time employee, like Mr. Wagonbrenner? Like put them both in the same, not paying. Or is he one of those that can do that? Because he'd be a good candidate for full-time. Is what I'm getting at. I mean. I don't know if he could work full time. I was thinking, I mean, I'd much rather be retired, so I don't part time to full time if they wanted. He can. Yeah, that's, uh, he can. He can if he wants to. But would he lose his retirement? No sir. Oh, he wouldn't. Because he retired under that program. Oh, okay. So he retired under that other. Yes, sir. The earlier program. Okay. He's in PORS or he's in sir? he's in SCRS or. He's in Porters. I think he retired from the state retirement system. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he probably did Charles. from the city of Charleston. Yeah. So, you know, he's not. And now he's building Porters time? No, he's not paying into the retirement at all. He, he's not having to pay into the state retirement. Now, he retired as Terry, and he's retired from the city after the Terry program was over. Which one are we talking about? Sir, Raymond Lloyd. Raymond Lloyd. Lloyd. The one that DJ was talking about on the. If you look at your organization, yes. or are you seeing that list there to you the part timers? But well, we are paying thirty-seven hundred dollars in his retirement, sir. We do pay thirty-seven hundred dollars in his retirement. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. 
So he is in retirement. A, that's a function of the system, yeah, even retired from yeah. the system, that we still have to pay the employer side up to retirement. And he still has to pay part of his salary, part time salary into the state system, but don't get no benefits for it. <laughs> I think, is that the question though? Would it be more beneficial for him to, make to be him on a contract, contract. where he doesn't have to pay the retirement? Well, I was thinking more that we wouldn't have to pay Well, him. that too, yeah. 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 I, mean, yeah. I wasn't, it's both I was worried more about should have, should have left it the way he said it. It sounded better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on your perspective. But I mean, yeah, I was just thinking if, if he was a contract, then it would just be like, okay, so like we make could a number 20,000 oh, lease. Stand up. So, so just, oh, you are standing up. <laughs> uh, just, just from I guess from the finance perspective, it's key to distinguish between a contractor and an employee, right? From a tax perspective, we cannot classify Mr. Wagenbrunner. He should actually should not even be on a worksheet. He needs. He's a contractor. He should be. He is actually should not. His day to day duty should not be directed by anyone in the department. He should have. A set, here's your tasking, you determine your hour, you figure out what you want to do when and how, and give us the deliverable at the end of the day. That, absolutely right. I forgot about that. I'm so sorry. So we take him off of this completely? Yeah. I mean, he's listed as a compliance officer. Well, but but to least, he was listed on there, he was part time at that point in time, and he, he went to a contract. But to, to Lee's point is a contractor, a 1099 contractor, you could not supervise. And that's OSHA rules and federal rules. Um, yeah, so so here you go. Uh, you say, okay, you have to do X, Y, and Z for this contract, and you have to deliver it to me by May the first. And you go do it and get it done. How are you going to do it and get it done? Um, to Raymond's point about being a part timer because he comes in and he does operations for all four shifts. So he's working across all four shifts. He, uh, you, you'd have to leave him as an employee. Well, he could set, he still sets his own schedule there, right? Lloyd sets his own schedule or you, you schedule him? I mean, is it not, just because he comes in more frequently doesn't mean he's not in charge of his mm -hmm. own schedule, which was what Lee's point was, right? So, you no. can't be tasking them. They shouldn't even really have a desk. You can't supervise office. them. I mean, it's, it's a, you can work from home if you want to. If you're performing a deliverable that has to be on premises, they give them maybe a workspace, but it's not a designated office with a name team. An auditor walks in and they see all that, and you're even supervising personnel, they're going to say, uh -uh -uh, you're an employee, mm -hmm. you should be taxed as such, and you don't have all the perks and benefits thereof. The fact that he's supervising personnel. And yeah. That is certainly I, I thought he was just a training officer making doing the certification work to get people certified Raymond right now yeah. Raymond Raymond so what does Raymond do every day right. Raymond works three days a week over all three shifts he's operating at the, sort of like the operation chief battalion chief level which every other department fire department has that and due to his experience and training. And if we have three full-time captains, and you know we don't have a full-time battalion chief or operations chief. Uh, but that's what he does. He comes in and trains, he sets policy, he does the inventory, he does the equipment inventory. He does the uh, uh, fire marshal work. Uh, takes them out training. He uh, makes sure that the whole testing is done. Uh, the apparatus testing is done each year. Uh, and like I said, he's an EMT and he responds to calls and he fills in. Like well, if we got a full timer out or we only got two per day, uh, he fills in during the day on them weekdays until we can get a part timer in at night or somebody to cover at night. And and he actually rides the truck and answers calls, and he actually answers, answers calls as a chief level officer. Okay, just for my clarification. So is he, because we're two different names, is, he, is this individual a 1099 person 
days a no, week. No, the one he's talking a, about right now is a W-2 person. Okay, so those are two th two different things. So he is an employee. Yeah, yeah. part time. Okay, this one is there. There's no job description for him or Wagner Brothers contract. Okay, who's Brothers? the other man? Wagner Brothers is the contract guy. Yes. Yes. This guy, Ray Lloyd, is an employee. That's the difference between the two that they were going back for. That's, that's, yeah, that's what I was following, <laughs> and I was like. Do we have job descriptions for them? I asked Tack, and I didn't, she didn't have anything. I uh, thought we submitted one last year. I thought when we last last year, I uh, thought we submitted a job description. Yeah, there was a whole, you know what? I just got rid of all that paperwork. <laughs> you save it for a damn year, you don't need it. I mean, if we got a budget, yeah. I mean, she didn't, she didn't have one on he, file. He, he, and he's, I, he's, I have one of my budget books last year. Yeah, so he, he is what, his job description was basically what Rocky just said, other than, the answering the call saying he was he's the operations person mm -hmm. for the for the department which would have been if you go to a fire department say an operations person for the department I was just gonna say if you look at um, talking about full-time so we have a lieutenant in the police department that does what Raymond uh, full-time what Raymond does is a part-time mm -hmm. person in the fire department right so, no, so no, 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 I'm just saying, so, so if we want to, if you want, if, if you, if you're, if you want to make sure that full-timers report full-timers, we can make this a full-time position, it's just going to be cost. He started doing it as a cost reduction to the fire department, or well, actually we didn't have anybody doing it, but it was a cost reduction to do it part-time versus full-time in the beginning. I don't necessarily have a problem with that, but I would like to know that everybody has a job description at some some somewhere in this system. So yeah, I said I just because I had them all write their jobs job descriptions down and turn them into me a yeah, year ago. I'm I just, sure it's somewhere. I just threw all that away the other day when I was cleaning out in the move. Thank That's you. what moving does. For second, with the with the rundown of the police certifications, can you want to put one for the fire too? May I offer this to you in reference to Robert's position as client's officer contract employee and as Raymond Lloyd's part time position? Very respectfully, I would offer to you that a compliance officer for the city of North Charleston makes almost $50,000 a year. $50,000 a year. A battalion chief in a full time fire department ranges from Sixty-seven thousand a year, up to ninety some thousand a year. My point being that for what Robert and Raymond do, Robert being the compliance officer, complying with all the OSHA regulations, which is a very important part, only not only in the operation of the public safety department, but citywide, and writing the city manual, city safety manual, and OSHA regulations to be followed. I would say if we're getting a bargain with them two part-time salaries or the one contract salary and the one part-time salary and you're getting full-time work out in them part-time positions and as chief level officers yes they're over the full time you got some volunteer departments that have volunteer battalion chiefs of the stations that's over full-time paid persons and you got volunteer assistant chiefs over full time and I would just offer well what I'm also hearing is even though I don't really know these people is that Robert is contracted gives deliverables like manuals or whatever you just said so technically we are still okay with the way that we deliver this a 1099 he's got deliverables he's got you know, whether the deliverable is a manual or this or that, compliance. On the other hand, what I'm hearing also is that we have someone that's part-time, that has a certain level of qualifications determined by, you know, you all. And those are just two different discussions that make sense to me now. Yeah, two different jobs. Okay. 
I'm with it. Yeah. So 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 you think of Wagenbrenner as he delivers manuals and yep. procedures for following Consulting. rules and regulations. Yep. Ten ninety nine. Lloyd the title Lloyd delivers um, Operation. operations, which includes testing and. And he's called a part-time employee because of that job description. Yeah. Okay. Um, um. And, and Robert would have been a part-time employee except for his yeah. his retirement restrictions screw up. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Uh, the fact, he actually started out as a part-time employee, and he yeah. found out he was getting ready to get in trouble in uh, the first year, and is like, "Oh my God, I can work till April the third. I can't work no more after April the third. I understand. Officially, you can call me and I'll talk to you, but I can't. You can't say you're paying me. He's a consultant. Me, right. He's a consultant. Yeah, basically. Think um, about I met him. Uh, are we waiting? Or are we keep going? You want to take five minutes? A break. It's up to you, sir. For a personal break. I have a few handouts. Oh, I got to see. Okay. Uh, no, Should have gone out before we started. A few handouts for what? Right. For, for you all, replacement sheets from the last meeting. Over replacement sheets. Oh, yeah, don't, don't. We're, we're in the zone right now, man. Let's, let's just zone up. I mean, I'm, to be honest with you, I, I only have a couple questions. I'm on fire, and then we're going to take a break. If you just want to go right, through well, it. You got, I'll get through so, it. I mean, there's not that much left. Um, a redundant question is the $1,500 employee water rescue and EMT training in the fire side. Same answer as the police. I assume just they are seriously doing that, just getting cheaper and through Coast Guard and stuff like that. But our guys are getting up with their EMT and things of that sort so they can start life saving measures. Awesome. Yeah, I'll take Go ahead, Andrew. Okay. From operating supply. Um, like I said, the only real change was the additional sets of gear. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where we left off. Um, that pretty much wraps that up. The next, the next change for the fire department is a request for advanced training in the dues and training department. SPI training, it's a leadership school for the deputy chief bird. That was the only real change there. Um, uh, just because it's the educator now. Um, so SPI means the auto death benefit is it's professional development. And yeah, it's a executive level law enforcement course. Okay, exactly. uh, Southern Police Institute is the University of Louisville. Mm -hmm. Would this be in police stuff? Um, yeah, we can move it there, that's fine. This is so the police. It's expensive. expensive. It's very yeah. expensive. I think it's very excessive for somebody who's already a leader, who's been a leader for years. I mean, that's one we spend on other dudes of training. I don't remember spending that much money on that. Four thousand in for two firefighters in the fire academy, but this year is only one thousand budgeted, and it still says for two personnel. So what would change with that? That's a. Uh, I thought that was kind of weird. It's not a lot of money. It's just weird. Yeah, one of the things that we found <coughs> is that, like for instance, uh, me and Lieutenant Lavick were able to do went to the fire academy last year, but we did like a hybrid course, and just the cost there was just less than actually going to the Lydman Academy, um, and it seemed to be a lot more. Um, conducive to like family life so right. a lot of our guys have families and things so we got so. an interest to do it that way versus like actually going in-house and staying somewhere. Gotcha, so it's just a lot of super 
program, but it still gives the same certification, same same, same thing. Same Just program, but no dormitory. That's awesome. Who wants to stay up there or somebody? Well, you gotta you gotta be Not willing to drive back and forth to Orangeburg. <laughs> Orangeburg. Three times a week or something. She's gonna be in Orangeburg in Mount Pleasant, okay? All right. Because my president's old. And and it's kinda like it's always six to nine at night, you know, mm -hmm. so it's uh, that's uh, may I point or, out also that uh, more and more Taylor Curlin were sent to North Charleston recruit school, which Thing. Yeah. This is the money, the eight week course up at uh, Columbia Academy. And that was at a reduced savings also. And that was a straight week thing instead of. Uh, they run their own academy, right? Sir? They run their own academy, but then there's some weeks they you have to. They run their own academy as with the city of Charleston, but to get that firefighter to, they teach the firefighter to curriculum a plus additional items. It's not like uh, law enforcement. You can run your own academy, but you still end up having to go to Columbia or for some training or something yeah, like that. Or? This state doesn't allow individual academies. There's no, okay. Um, One more infusion training, the EMC basic life support training. That is followed up with what we spoke about, getting those guys further um, accredited so they can do more things. What is, remind me, what are the different levels? Like EMC and aren't there like two or three? You have first responder, which is like real basic, which is next level up, EMT, and then paramedic. Okay. So as, as, a, as the EMT, they can like, you know, start IV, they can do a lot more things as that. And each one has a specific medical director guidance that says you can do these specific items. Right. And you can only work up to the level that the agency is certified. Since we're DLS, they can't work in, even if they are a paramedic, they have to work at that EMT level. Gotcha. Is that, a, is that an easy print sheet? I don't want to really work. I'm just curious what the different levels look like that they can do. That's that's important information. Because everybody knows we're at the end of the island. We have to wait for our ambulance. We probably could look it up yeah. online. Well, we, we, have, we have that. Because we have to, our guys have to sign off knowing and acknowledging, hey, this is the maximum level I can work with. Right. That's that's great. I mean, that really is. That's yeah. great. Speaking, speaking of that, uh, Dr. French, is he under contracts? Yeah, so, it was there. As I was well trying as to remember. Where, yeah, he's yeah. at the bottom line under contracts. So that's what Dr. French is for. He, he's the guy that's the, and what that, the medical officer that Andrew just relayed to. And what that specifically, had a question, we, Dr. We, Dr. we specifically have to buy medical malpractice insurance to have him, to cover him for signing off on our SOPs. Gotcha. So that's what he does. Can I just go back? So we ended up having a nine thousand dollar budget savings because we made a no, decision. No, you can't spend it. Sorry, I know, I know. I'm cutting to the chase. I'm like, okay, so so we saved nine thousand dollars, and technically, what would be determined to be professional development. Let's just say. So what happens now with that reallocation? It's going to happen. It's come Thursday. Once we hear all their spiels, we get our questions answered, and we get any backup material. Come back here Thursday. We'll kind of go through it and say, okay, how do we all kind of agree? We're trying to find like 80, 90 percent consensus on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So it leaves only maybe a, an amendment or two for the actual meeting. And you just we can't take votes, but you can just you know you can feel the room and, and then we'll move forward. If anybody wants to make amendments after that, we can. But that's what we're kind of going. Okay, we'll save here, spend here, try and work through a bunch of that stuff. There was only a pot. And that probably get reached first. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. Point. The nine thousand goes back to the general fund. Yes. So at the end of the process, maybe you say your general fund now has twelve thousand dollars. So it's into a general fund. It doesn't yeah. stay. And maybe. then you can, well, you could put it back into the fire department if you okay, want. Okay. Just to. yep. Right. Because uh, just. Just because the chief has stepped back from SPI and nine thousand dollars, I'm not sure I would vote to cut the training budget down to fourteen thousand when it was twenty-seven thousand, twenty-three thousand. Yeah. I mean, I'd just leave, just leave it, just leave the nine thousand in the training budget, and don't don't think of it as an excess. Right, you don't have to break it. That just it gives out. them it's an a, option to. That get, was what that was one of my yeah, questions. Spread it out in some of the other lines yeah. or something Could like you, that, or you know, just keep it in pro development and you know. 
But I mean, yeah. that's what we can talk about on Thursday. So yeah, and you can just make Thursday. that up. You can make the that finale. A, you can make that an all an all system there instead of Burke, and just leave uh, leadership development as the title, and leave the nine thousand there, and then, then he can just they can disperse it among all the employees in some kind of leadership that's development true. process. Beautiful. All right, so we're going to work on Thursday. Okay. <laughs> Sound like you got it already. I mean. <laughs> like, all right, I got it. That Halloween car will be your money ever. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. <laughs> what did you say? The Halloween car will give you more money than ever. Oh, well, oh my lord. Uh, where are we at on the car? Anywhere? You're at the uh, fuel. Right. Yeah. The last one was the train. Um, and then. If you remember back from the police, there will be 15,000 in that fire vehicles and equipment reserve. While you touched on that, that was actually my last question for fire. Um, last year we put 60,000 aside for vehicles. Um, in the past we've had to buy the, the SCVA apparatuses, uh, radios, etc. but there's just nothing, there wasn't anything in here until this morning um, as far as future planning and putting money in reserves. There. Why? And why are we only doing 15 this year and we did 60 last year? I, know, I remember we wanted to get a bigger jump, but are we on track for what we need? Because all these things are hot ticket items. Those apparatus, if I remember, it was like $120,000 whack. But that was a bond, right? And we're not yeah, we a so bond we, for that. There's a couple ways we're attacking that, right? Yeah, so about 120. Um, one of the ways we're attacking that is with the purchase of the two apparatus is there's a significant tax benefit to us rolling equipment into the purchase of those vehicles. Um, because as you know, we buy vehicles in South Carolina, you pay $500 tax, no matter how much cost. So it makes sense for them to buy the trucks outfitted. And a lot of those items are replaced in that because then you're paying $500 in the tax versus tens of thousands in tax. Um, so that's typically how most apartments do that. So we're, that's something we're doing as well. Um, that's one reason. Another reason is we put a big chunk in last year because that's the money we found by scheming through the budget, you know, or screening through and, and seeing what we could do. This 15 is what we could do this year. Screening. Screening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Screening's better than scheming. It's all good. It's all good. Really, that's not good. Really good. <laughs> anyway, and then uh, the other way, that's the 15K is where we were at this year. Uh, that being said, based on what we're getting so far in the negotiations with those apparatus, we believe that that, along with what's in there already, gets us to a really good starting point, and along with the, the bond that y'all, I think we're gonna be under budget, is what it's looking like so far. So we felt safe, and that's where we're at. Okay. Um, so that was a, I remember we had that $120,000 whack, and that wasn't fun. You know, we said we need to start Doing some because it's something that's going to expire. You know, you can set it up. Um, that, that was that was all that. As long as you feel comfortable putting that in reserves, <laughs> you can be the one to ask for one hundred twenty thousand. So, yeah. Two trucks. We expect how much will cost? Uh, Total. Yeah, remember. I think we initially estimated it was just shy of two, and then. Debbie Chief Bird, do you remember what the most recent quote is on that? On the two trucks? I gotta make something to do with that. Right under two million. It was clear. I think it was like one point the one for the ladder trucks. Like one million for the ladder and eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred for the engine, something like that. Oh. When we talk about 120,000, really the, the big pill's 1.9. Yeah. Which is why we set up the reserve to, to right. Mr. Rich's point to kind of. And also the plan was the, the uh, now this, this, this past July, this, this quarter one budget that we just operated in. The bond so went one, off. That bond for the public safety building, that's the last payment. So that's 120,000 ish that comes off the budget next year that will be. We'll throw it right back on. Right. Towards probably a uh, lease purchase for these apparatus. 
Thanks. Chief, I just had a question on the utilities. The Thirty-eight hundred uh, has gone from in the budget from like two grand up to thirteen thousand. I think that was a reallocation. Um, last year, our utilities was out of whack. Okay. So we were over in one, um, and I think there's a couple of accounts we had like that that weren't getting the accounts weren't taken out in the right way. They're all pulled out of police or not pulled out of one. And so there's just been a reallocation based on where the things actually are. Um, housing was one other one that was like that. Um, it wasn't that they were overspent, it was just that they were not in the right account. I don't know if that makes sense. Does that make sense? No. Um, <laughs> like, like as an example, let's you let's use a housing allowance just because I can I can speak that one off the top of my head. Is, okay. You know, you had fifteen thousand um, earmarked for police, <coughs> right? And ten thousand for fire, and seven thousand for dispatch. Well, the problem with that is if the person getting the stipend is not in dispatch, they're a police officer. It's all coming out of the police account. So it would look like the fire the dispatch one hasn't been touched and the police one's over, when really the total amount is exactly right. the same. And the police utilities, you're going from forecast of 24,000 to a budget of 21,000. So, yeah, so some of that's getting moved okay. to the fire side, and then just I guess with Aaron, a lot of that's based on, you know, like the hotspots or whatever, the phone and hotspot combination thing that we use for internet access when you're out and about. Um, so that's where those costs okay, could be utilities. That's where those okay, costs all right. Are coming from. It's not just water. Our electricity. Or right. electricity. Right. Yeah. Well, water nice. we got covered, don't we? <laughs> no, that's a separate. That's a separate, separate business deal. all of a Okay. Yeah, well, you'll you talk go. about that later. Okay, that's like, okay. <laughs> you want to go up on the rates later. <laughs> okay. Chief, uh, question. Sure. On uh, the third, third exhibit, the uh, back to the overtime, the 1104. And I'm not sure if this is for you or for me, but there seems to be consistency in that overtime to roughly 150% um, in every other area, police, dispatch, public works. But for some reason in fire, um, it's 50%. Is the way in which we pay fire overtime different? Some of the fire tabs are in the fire tab, third, third page. That's a that's your question. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed it. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's, it's your it's your formula. It's your question. Yeah, fire fire tab, third page. Fire tab, third page. Overtime, eleven oh four. Okay. So for police, um, dispatch, and even public works, we pay overtime at a rate of one hundred and fifty percent. But when you do the math on this overtime column, it looks like it's 50 percent, percent. So that that's based on the current annual salary. Uh, is what it's, it's what it's designed to be supposed to be. Okay. So if you took if you took the first line, um, employee 987, current hourly rate 1770. If you divide the overtime column by the overtime hours, that produces eight dollars and eighty-five cents an hour, not what I would think would be twenty-four, twenty-five dollars. That's a question. I'll double check that. Now. Yeah, you need to check your formula in this in that line. Yeah, I wasn't sure if fire was paid differently because we're paying for sleep time and things of that nature by having them there twenty-four-seven certain days. They reach overtime at a different threshold, but it should be like you're saying, time and a half, just yeah. like any other one. So their, that's their not standard hours are significantly higher, as you can tell. Their the standard hours are a lot higher. So their threshold is 106 versus 86 on police. Okay. So that's 50%, not 150%. It is, yes. That, it's 50%. It's a, it, it, it is 50%, but it's not. That's not correct to add 50%. Should it be 150 percent? Right. It should be. So, so that 31,000 could conceivably be 90,000. We have a 60,000 dollar hole to solve for. A 
unless we purposely did it that way. Are you trying to back your The end number, I guess, came out correctly. However, the, the math or the formula is a little irregular. I'd have to back off the OT hours. It's not 665 hours. It would be 200 some hours. Mm. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Where are your coins at, Lee? Where are your gold coins at? So you just recheck the formula. It basically what it did, what I what happened was the overtime hours the compensated. Semantics. You still come up with 13, uh, 31,000. <laughs> 31, <000. laughs> well, I don't mind just changing the point. You're at the, the same place. <laughs> That's right. yeah. It's more consistent. Again, that's why we schemed. And <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was screamed and schemed. And I, I appreciate being able to live that down at some point. Yeah, never, ever. Five years. Let's uh, yeah. <laughs> have a big shelf life on that one. Yeah. Never done that. Um, are we you taking a break? Or do you want me to hit this match? Hit this match. Can't be much in there. No. Um, Although we need six more. Sal salary. <laughs> yeah. uh, salaries, uh, but just like the other biggest change of the formula. Um, the overtime was plussed up a little bit in dispatch. Because um, somebody got elected? Yeah. But no, it's, it's one of those things. Dispatch is a, is a tough animal. Um, we only have full -time, uh, four full-time staff members in dispatch. Um, it cannot be unmanned, obviously. Um, it is a thankless job. Part timers are hard to come by. Especially, and, and really to Billy's credit, he was really efficient, did a good job, and he could probably test. It's a tough job to stay proficient at when you're not doing it full time. You don't have to lie, man. No, no, it, 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 I didn't know what I got into. <laughs> it was, yeah. It's a very tough job to do part time. Um, it really is. It's challenging. It's, it's very challenging. You think of it this way. I mean, <laughs> just think of a job that you have a job and you're there. Especially in the evening, you're there. You're the only guy there. You can't have hot food. <laughs> to take a bathroom break is a real trick. You got to take all everything with you. <laughs> you better take. And, and guess what? Guess when everything the calls come? Did, right, right when you're in, in Sorry, the middle. You know, yeah. it's a, it is a miserable. The timing. Job. Is, the timing is uncanny. It, it's a yeah. miserable job. I mean, this I, level of detail. Now, Chief, you have two candidates now. If I'm not mistaken, is that true? I think two hiring <laughs> candidates for part-time dispatch currently uh, in the hopper. They did not interview well. They didn't. Okay. But, um, so we still have those part-time spots. Uh, okay. For. Um, so how how do we fund? Um, and I think Spencer may have gone through this. We fund. We have about like five thousand dollar budget for advertising in the administrative. Does that include uh, recruitment for police and all the whole shebanger? I'm just thinking, you know, job fairs or, I mean, there's a lot, I think there's a lot of opportunity or something that we can get a little more aggressive on recruitment, both for beach and parking, mm -hmm. dispatch, um, police or whatever. As a municipality, are we permitted to um, provide um, referral bonuses? We just, just get more in the hopper. Somebody, somebody 
It's a numbers game. You get more than Hopper, you're going to find qualified candidates, which is key, but also more qualified candidates that you'd have a. Yeah, but do you, do you think that would be effective a referral bonus that it would be used potentially by existing personnel to identify um, resources? The only real experience I have is I know North Charleston has quite a bit of success. Actually, it's a double-edged sword. There, they give a referral bonus, like a portion, to the active employee who mm -hmm. goes out and says, "Hey, whoever," and then the person that comes in also that usually it's paid half when they get on board and then another half when they pass their probationary time is typically how they do it. Um, and I know they've been pretty successful because of course every officer and their brothers, you know, <laughs> call them their friends because they know they're going to get a little bit of a... Okay. Yeah. Well, well, no, okay. Uh, I have one question. Why are we putting 21000 into Central Dispatch Record Management Reserve? Um, that is there simply because our, so there's two things there. So contracts, this also plugged into your question, so I'm not sidestepping. The, the contract line, that 10,000 is in there because we are in the process of currently building a bridge between county's dispatch system, uh, it's called rapid deploy, and our, our MS system, which is our records management system. And the reason that's important is and how those two work together is your CAD system is your computer-aided dispatch, right? So that's where, you know, like if you're the caller, you call in, hey, I'm John Smith at 123, you know, Jones Street, and I need a police officer, right? So that creates the initial response screen to which the dispatcher works off of and sends units. And then as the call progresses, you know, if you say if you're the officer on the scene or the firefighter and you say, hey, I'm in contact with Mrs. Smith, you know, whatever, they run the information that gets entered. So any, any vehicle, all that kind of stuff gets entered. And then on the back end, once the call is closed out, it transmits all that information into our RMS system, which is where we write the reports. Um, so those two systems have to mesh. And the benefit of using count or having that is, so, you know, in years past, one of the big issues with 911 calls is that there's a lot of delay and that someone calls 911, county answers, they have to create a CAD screen and then it gets sent to a call taker and then that call taker has to call our dispatch and then we have to re-dispatch and create our own system. Well, what this will do is that we will share CAD with county at their cost, right? So county's paying for this, this their, us to use their system. We just have to be able to have our records manager or reporting system talk to the CAD system. So that's what that is. The 21,000 specifically, and it might be might actually can move up a spot to the radios because what that actually is is some money um, to start saving to replace our um, console, like the actual radio console. Um, it is end of life and they're really expensive. Um, so that was the start for that, the saving. It is currently functioning, um, but what's the approximate cost of that? The last one we bought was when, when did that happen? The last one we bought was when I first took over, so that would have been 2014. And we bought a used one from James Island because they moved from their own dispatch to county. So we bought a used one from them, and it cost us about 20 grand. Um, I would estimate currently they're probably closer to 30, 30 to 35, um, using those that previous experience. Right. Um, so we, that was some money that we had gleaned through the, through going through the budget and we put there in the reserve to where hopefully we can save up and buy, buy one. Okay. So what's the, the 56,000 line item for the 2020 forecast actual, is it, we spend that on something? Yes. That's what we spent on the encryption. Gotcha. Okay. I, cause we need to put that account That's a portion of what we spent on it. Right. No, no, no. I, I remember now. I, I just wanted to clarify. So what's left in that reserve? Thirty thousand dollars. I'm not sure what's. So make sure we're not building up a balance to yeah. go back. Uh, uh, Chief, uh, Chief, would we if we incorporate it with the county's system? We'd have to change the Allen system. Yeah, you, the way it'll work 
once this all you know once this all happens is that the actual CAD system, so just what the dispatcher uses, right, will be strictly rapid deploy. It's that that system that they use. So you will no longer use Allen. Okay. Is there dispatcher. would be is there money in there for retraining or that transition yeah, time? They, will provide, to they provide. Okay. Perfect. Basically, we would have to basically send our people there. You know, so it's probably going to cost us some overtime. Okay. But we'll send our people there to get trained. But they would cover the cost of the training. Okay, so perfect. They would cover the cost of training. Um, and then from one event, well, not one, but one huge benefit to that is basically how it would work now is instead of that only having that transfer of 911 calls, mm -hmm. when county takes the 911 call and they enter the information. It's been filled in already. <coughs> it's done. Real time. Beautiful. That's perfect. So That's ideal. Have, you don't have to worry about that Brilliant. loss and then yep. redo of all the information. Got the T-shirt. I know. Yeah, it's a big deal. <laughs> it's it a big deal. It is a big deal. Yeah, that saves so much time, especially in an emergency situation. Yeah. I didn't understand Mr. Rich's point. It was, it was the fifty-six thousand that was spent on encryption, or there's thirty thousand dollars left after encryption. We spent that earlier this year. We pulled <coughs> out of reserves for something else, and there's thirty thousand left in that account. I worry every time, and Tim understands because we that that account was created years ago. When we're contemplating going back to the county's consolidated 911 dispatch, and we spent that money as fast as we could so that we couldn't go back to that 911 dispatch. So, when people just had money that I'd love to rename that account to something else, it just removes that stigma. Well, actually, we probably need to take the 21 and, like you said, move it up a line for um, instead radios, of record management to radios or police slash dispatch radios. Console. Because the last time we got lucky when we got that system in, two, I forgot about that, in 2014, because our system died, a hard death, and those guys just happened to be sitting on one. I mean, we were really lucky on that one. We could just pick it up and bring it over. Uh, so we, we need to really think about it before we have another hard death in that dispatcher's system. Yeah. Uh, getting the thing upgraded. And if we have, and if there's a balance in that reserve that records made in the previous account or whatever, if there's a balance in there, we gotta come back anyway to spend it out of reserve and we could probably just tag in together and <coughs> get moving on that console. Do we, we save everything on a local server or does everything stay on the county server and then we access it So there? we are pretty much specifically moving towards cloud-based computing. That's like the way, that's just the way things are going. So our records management is cloud-based. Um, and there's multiple backups. Um, our body camera stuff, which was currently in-house, is moving to cloud-based. Our, our in-car cameras are moving to cloud-based through WatchGuard, um, while we're all bottom out. Um, so that's all that's that. Will we build our own cloud, or will we build a partition section it's, of the county's cloud? It is, no. That, okay. So the county also does. They do on-prem and cloud as a backup, and I think it's somewhere in Tennessee or something like that. Actually, I think there's two, two backups. Um, and that's just in case multiple things happen at once. But anyway, we would basically, our CAD records, we would be able to research the same CAD records. There's no partition specifically. It would just be like geofenced. So like if I'm searching for records, you know, I type in Bali Beach or whatever zip code, it'll, it'll only grab our information. So it's not specifically partitioned. It's just, does that make, make sense? Well, they allow uh, searches in, in surrounding areas. That's, that's, that's great. Um, so really, everything we're, we've been doing here recently is moving to that, just because of the storage is so expensive. It's awesome. And, uh, anyway. Anything else? Any more questions? Not on, not on dispatch, just um, back on police. SUV 172 seems to be an outlier for mileage. Is that, uh, is that used to transport? To North Charleston, is that um, uh, 20, 20, uh, 19 mileage, 15, 7. Is that used to Parker, which, which one are we looking at? It's uh, SUV-172, the Interceptor. Okay. It's uh, a, little, a little past halfway down the page. Let's see it. Yep. It's 
really stands out compared to the other. And we had a couple. We have a couple there that are stand out um, that are about the same the same year, um, about the same miles. Um, Just the one year mileage increase of fifty two thousand. And lot. some of that I've noticed is we get our like I, I take this information off our gas receipts and sometimes I don't get those as routinely um, and so when they're reported I might have a big gap um, so that 19 mileage might have been under reported depending on when I did this report um, why gas receipts are not a dominant um, because I don't have to track down the person I can get it straight from what they're you know, what we're getting off our credit card receipt it's just an easier like when I go you know, I'm trying to track down to 20 people. I can just look at one receipt and take the mileage off that receipt versus trying to call, like call you, call you, call you, call you whatever the case may be. Because that's what you mean, what mileage is supposed to enter. You know, when you scan your gas card, you just like your gas card. And we do, like our supervisors do, do vehicle inspections, like the mileage is taken off of that. But again, it's it's just the ease of when I'm writing the report. Does that make sense? Like, uh, so our supervisors do once a month go in there and they inspect the vehicle, write the mileage, and that will come from stuff down there. But when I'm doing this report, it's in my take it off the gas receipts. But it might be somebody who lives farther from yeah, town, but somewhere or somewhere. For sure, builds yeah. up those kind of miles. That's one thing that's unfortunate. <coughs> uh, just the cost of living nearby sometimes is, is prohibitive for lower paid employees, so they tend to live further out. And so sometimes they rack up their miles driving back and forth. Yeah. And we, we pay that gas. Yes, sir. That's why we had a lot of discussions about extending the, the stipend to include even James Island maybe not not paying a full stipend but paying like a reduced stipend to encourage people to come and live a little bit closer we had a long discussion about that yeah. for the housing allowance correct you're upset right. of the housing and, and it's good retention if they're here in the yeah. community they'll love so it they, they'll stick awesome. around yeah a lot of our staff i would say the large majority of our staff has to live pretty far out mm -hmm. you know even even somerville's getting kind of expensive so that they're even on kind of the outskirts of somerville Throw this out there, but it's what you see what they make and to find housing. It's just, yeah, it's just it's something for us to keep an eye on. Like people are still having to move further and further, yet commute longer and longer. We're paying I gas, can't, and I can't imagine driving to work. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I guess I guess it is. I don't know. No, I, right. I don't know if they have lunch. Yeah, they lunch have uh, lunch in the washout. I believe there's chicken tenders and salads. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Um, right after we started, we got an email of our the state with CRM. And he wants to know if we have $55,000 match a new grant to remove the rest of the boats out there. So do you mind after lunch if I start, to start with that bomb and give him some ideas of where he could possibly come from? Yeah. All right. We figured uh, we got 180 grand in old uh, capital acquisition. Just been sitting there for a while. We got. Eleven thousand dollars in the grant match fund, and we got about one hundred eighty in that Marsh and Beach legal fund. Mm -hmm. I want to take that out. Yeah. So cap acquisition, we can get ten thousand dollars out of the grant match fund, and then we need forty-five from somewhere. So that old capital acquisition reserve is sitting there for a while. That's a that's a good place to do it from. All right. More so than the legal thing. All right, I'll throw that. My out personal there. opinion. All right, I'll throw that out there. And then also offer just to take it out of the fund balance. Yeah.
talked about it. We've got it around. We've talked about like the history museum. We talked about the history in town. Yeah, we've always had it around. The sweat or can you turn the mics off? Oh yeah, sorry. Let me make cat jokes. I screwed up last time. You're on the right path with the records management and the dispatch. It helps everybody. It helps everybody. And that record, boy, man, it is unbelievable. It's super 